So she's she's like, him. She says to him, you need to uh, introduce me to fucking all the lads in the band. Now. Looks ASAP. This is, yeah. this is me fucking, this is what I'm into. And, uh, so what the goes, groupies, they were a big thing well, in the 70s. It was a big thing in the 70s and 80s, yeah. So, off they go. They meet up with the Vanilla Fudge keyboard player, um, a guy called Mark Stein. Now, Mark Stein had like a little 8mm camcorder thing, a little video recorder. And he was running around recording the whole thing. <laughs> so, when, when the girl seen the little video recorder, she said, oh, we should make a movie. And he's there, what do you mean? We should make a movie. And she pulls off all of her clothes. Now, bear in mind, Mark Stein is recording this entire thing, right? So he's running around fucking recording your one. Your one jumps in the bed, fully in the nip, and starts fucking trashing around, fucking, let's go, who wants force dibs, all this type of shit. Now, in the room as well, that the Led Zeppelin road manager, and his fucking name has left me. What is his name? Fuckity fuck fuck. Um, I'll remember now in a second. Actually, there was a guy called Bruce Wayne in there. He was like a road manager. <laughs> yeah. He was like a road manager for either Vanilla Fudge or Zeppelin or both. Like he just handled their fucking, you get from A to B. Um, John Bonham was there. Of course he was. Um, and Led Zeppelin's tour manager was there. And I can't remember his fucking name. I'll remember it later. But he was there. So apparently the lads had fucking caught. Now, there's a rumor that it was either a, a mud shark <laughs> or it was a red snapper. Oh, for okay. Sake. Now, the mud shark rumor might come from the fact that apparently Frank Zappa was doing the rounds as well, and he's seen the entire thing. And Frank Zappa made a movie called "Fucking Don't Fuck with That Mud Shark" or something like that, <laughs> and he wrote a song where he he depicts the entire incident as it happens. Right. Uh. So apparently, the rumor is that someone will fucking Mark Stein, the keyboard player from Vanilla Fudge, is recording. Someone takes either a mud shark. Or a red snapper and starts beating her one up with it. Right? Uh, right? No, but she's loving it. We're all having a good time. No, she's loving that. it. He's like slapping her across the chops with the fucking fish and she's fucking all rubbing her tits and fucking playing with herself, giving it the lemons, right? Giving it loads. Disgusting. Disgusting. So apparently someone turns around and says, let's see if this red snapper fits in your red snapper and starts sticking the nose of it up inside her. Right? Apparently she's loving all this. Right? Loving all this. So they deal with the completion. And fucking, will the film still run? Now, that's where, there's one of these legendary things where it says, like, let's see if this red snapper fits in your red snapper. But the rumor was that it was a mud shark, which is a slightly bigger animal, apparently. Let's see if this mud shark fits in your mud, mud shark. shark. Now, apparently she did take it up the hole as well. They tried it. Mac. Now, the big thing <laughs> is that every single person there. Drugs are a drug. Fucking, they were riddled with fucking drugs. The big thing, by the time this happened, the room was full. Of lads and bands, their wives, their girlfriends, their everything. The room was jam-packed. Now, is that not a stupid idea? If you're into that stuff, to bring your wife in and go, this is a regular Tuesday for me at work, honey. I'd say this stage, a lot of the guys just had their, their wives and girlfriends with them all the time to try and keep them level. I suppose. By 69. Um, well, you're, yeah, 69, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'd say a lot of lads were trying to get off the fucking heavy gear and they were bringing their fucking families with them on tour, you know? Um, as the Brian Wilson story from a couple of weeks ago where he gets introduced to his kids he doesn't know who they are They're trying to bring the family with him to create some sort of sense of that happens a lot on Ma- Maury and uh, mm. Sally Jesse Raphael mm. people getting introduced to their kids and pretending they don't know who they are exactly <laughs> so the rumour is that this film which has never been seen by anybody and the reason it's never been seen by anybody is because this guy whose name is Bruce Wayne apparently bought the fucking footage also he has a vault yeah in a cave. In a cave, under Wayne Manor. So he bought this footage, right? But he Most of Wayne, I found this type. Put it down, Alfred. <laughs> exactly. Put <yeah>. it down. <laughs> but apparently, by the time he got around to getting it developed... Oh, God, Mr. Wayne, what are they doing? What have you done? What are they doing? Some men just want to watch the world burn. Some men just like, want to watch the mud shark go into exactly. the red snapper. So apparently by the time he went to try and get this developed, the film had degraded so much that it was fucking useless. So the, the keyboard player from Vanilla Fudge sold it to this guy Bruce Wayne. He was something to do with Led Zeppelin. And uh, he wanted to keep it for fucking for the crack. So he can put it on one of his 700 mini TVs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> watch it and wank. Have a strangle wank while watching it. Like, I don't know. The bat signal's gone up. Damn right, it's gone up. Yeah. Now, what they're saying, Vanilla Fudge are saying that it was somebody from Vanilla Fudge who banged her with the fish. And John Bonham was saying that it was their tour manager. Like, there's like, too many different... Like, it's too weird. 
What they can all agree on, what the, and I'm sure their lawyers briefed them, was that this girl was very much into this. I was going to say, that keeps popping up. Yeah. Like, just want to say that before we say this, this person was very into this, and it, they just keep saying that. That's over a big again. thing, a big thing. And, 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 I, I, again, for, I read a shit ton about this, and if I thought this was in any way dodgy, I wouldn't have used it. I think this was just a professional fucking groupie Jerry back is, in the late 60s. Jerry is standing over you with his mud shark in yeah. his hand waiting if she to degrade yourself. I just think it was a fucking groupie groupian, to be honest with you. Speaking really quickly of Firethead, isn't Graham Benning in a shy bag? I don't know. Yes. Why? No, no, it's too, it's too long. Now, next. What's, is that, I know uh, we got true or false on that. I'm going to go semi true. I'd say de- something happens. Do you know what I'd do? Who done it? Do you know, know what I'd do if I had um, so much money? Like all the money in the world, I would beat an absolute fucking mischievous bastard with all the money in the world. I would find out what camera was used, oh, yeah. where it was done. I would recreate the entire thing, find a professional to degrade it so much, and then just leave that somewhere famous in a studio. So, so someone finds it. I have all the actors, okay, actors that look exactly like Led Zeppelin's tour managers and all them. I would recreate that as a joke and then go, ha. That, and just sit there bored going ha, that's a good day's work today imagine having that much money to spend who is your next one Charles Manson fuck up people say I'm no good it's actually quite a good song didn't he do uh, you go on okay go, no, on, yeah. go, on, go, on, go on so true or false I'm going to give you two statements and you okay. tell me whether they're true or false true or false Charles Manson is a mass murderer no I know this one definitely not Char- second one Charles Manson Never set foot in 150 Silo Drive, aka the Tate Murder House. Um, I think he might. Did he go there after? I can't remember. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. He went there before. Da- a year before. A year before. When they weren't even living there. Ooh. This is interesting. So, Charles Manson was really good friends with Dennis Wilson from the yes. Beach Boys. Yeah. That's, that's known. It is known. It is known. God. This is the way. We'll get to that show in a minute because that comes into the next one. Um, <clears throat> so he was hanging out and hanging out with a lot of music executives mm. because of Dennis Wilson. He wanted he to get an album made, didn't he? With him, yeah. yeah. He's like, this, he's like, and it's, a couple of other people I think met him. I can't remember how one was like, oh, hang on, was it? I could have been Bob Dylan met him as well and said, uh, no, he's garbage, but God, he's really good at improvising yeah. <laughs> with what little talent he has. I think mm. it might have been Bob Dylan that said that. Um, so he was in that house because it was occupied by a guy called Terry Melcher, uh, the son of uh, Doris Day, actually. Yeah. And uh, his partner at the time, Candy Spergen from Murphy Brown. I always used to think her name was Candy Spergen. <laughs> I remember seeing it written down one time. I was like, Candy Spergen? That sounds like Candy. Sp-. That's her. <laughs> um, so he was a, a very influential, like, Producer, yeah, at the time, and so a year before the, the murders, he went there and he said to him, Dennis, <laughs> Dennis Winter brought him on and goes, Check mm. this guy out, man. So he came to the gap and played a few songs. and uh, Terry Melcher went, I'm not going to give you um, a record deal, no. And apparently, everyone thought he was really weird and he wasn't really asked back to that house mm. ever again for any of the parties. Mm. So that's mad. He had that in his head that that's that's the place where my heart lives, that house. I yeah. didn't know any of this at the time. Recently reading this, going, mm. fucking hell, this is crazy. So, <clears throat> obviously, we know the history of that. A year later, I think or so, when uh, Roman Plansky and Sharon Tate were living there, he his gang, the Manson family, family yeah. went in and killed the two of them, and also Jay Seberg. That's right. And a couple of other people. Here's the mad thing. Do you know who was supposed to be and very, very, very nearly was in the gap that night? Who? Only he cancelled last minute. Quincy Jones. Really? Quincy Jones nearly got butchered. Man. And also Steve McQueen wants to go, but his girlfriend at the time or wife said uh, she wasn't feeling too good and wants hmm. to stay in that night. Um, so it's kind of crazy that he broke into that set or got, got them to go to that specific house. Yeah. And what did he know that they weren't living there anymore? The Melcher, Terry Melcher wasn't living there anymore. I don't know but, an awful lot about Manson. But what has come out is one of the Manson murder gang said that the Cielo Drive massacre was carried out to instill fear into Terry Melcher. Really? They said it was 
they were name checking him. Really? As the guy who Manson wanted dead. Oh. So he never. Maybe he never checked the occupancy. Maybe he didn't care. Because well, he wasn't there himself. He just sent Yeah, he people. sent them over. He goes, go to that cast. Yeah, took a, built his army over a year. Yeah. And fucking sent them off. No wonder did he go because that guy refused a record contract. Not even living there anymore. He actually, apparently, people said that he moved out because Mar- or Marlon Manson. Mm. Marlon Manson was there. Mm. Knock off for a while. Was he there for a while? Knock off? He was. He recorded an so, EP yeah. or something like that. Knock off. Um, that's fucking nuts. So he was he was in that year and uh, apparently made to feel unwelcome boy. Yeah, wasn't given his record contract, and uh, I mean that's got to play a part in it. Wasn't there a rumor that um, a couple of the songs off Dennis Wilson's solo album that was just boshed to death in the fucking press because it was garbage were written by uh, yeah, Charles? As that's well. what it said too. Apparently, at yeah. least two were written by him. Because he was, or co-wrote, co-wrote. Yeah, yeah. He, apparently, he was a co-writing credit. Um, or, or, I'm not going to. I'm not going to claim to know all this yeah. off my own back. Um, Blind Boy done a thing a while ago about uh, Dennis Wilson and Manson. And uh, the big thing was about drum machines. And uh, apparently the record label that were putting out Dennis's album wouldn't fork out for a session drummer. So they gave him one of the first ever drum machines. Why is Blind Boy always getting to our stuff before we I do? Know, yeah. Before we do. We yeah. should really, I should listen to more <laughs> stuff so I don't cover ground that's already come from Ireland. He, and he hasn't done what, you're, what you've just done, but he talked about, it was more about, it was an episode about drum podcast, machines. So we'll yeah. about, um, yeah. about drum machines, about Dennis Wilson using the first drum machine and it was like a slight. Oh, right, right. It was um, the record label uh, okay. trying to annoy him because nobody wanted drum machines. Mm. So, so that's <coughs> the thing. He's not a mass murderer like some people stupidly mm-hmm. think he is, but he was in the house a year beforehand. That was in 1968 yeah. and the murders were in 1969 of course yeah, that's crazy man yeah. nearly didn't have <coughs> Michael Jackson's albums if Quincy Brown Quincy was, Brown um, Quincy Jones was uh, killed there was a rumour that uh, Manson had killed at least one person that's true a vagrant a vagrant or when, when he was a vagrant maybe I thought something some guy over yeah. in, 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 in like he claimed yeah. to have killed at least one yeah. person but nothing if he claimed it then I absolutely would believe it yeah yeah, yeah yeah 100% um, he's not as lauded by the <coughs> Uh, old community because he wasn't that good looking so and he didn't kill enough people he didn't kill enough kids he's more uh, <laughs> Manson would be more uh, would have been taken by the metal and punk community because for imagery Marilyn like Manson a, and, and the Beatles link as well with the yeah. Helter Skelter yeah. so look um, we know that for a fact to be true he was there uh, yeah. according to everybody so uh, he was there do we think that he no. thought Terry Meltzer was still there though maybe probably Probably. Who's your next one? I'm sure there's a million books written about it. Yeah. My next one, I'm going to give you a question. Are you ready? Yes, I like questions. Did Old Dirty Bastard lift a car off a trap child? That was Bruce Banner. That's how he, be, that's how he knew he wants to be the Hulk. Yeah. He, oh, no, he, no, sorry. No, he saw a woman lifting a car off her son. That's another thing. That, that, that same fella who debunked. Uh, Marilyn Manson for me T- he was the one who told me that in school that uh, you get this, you get women this. have superpowers for protecting children and can lift cars off babies like you can just come to you if, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's a lie that, isn't that, isn't that, is that is, I don't that's from the, the movie The Hulk is that from that's not it's from the TV series is that The Hulk's story is that what his no. research was no. trying to harness that energy was it no it was just gamma rays I don't know what that had to do with that's in, L1's that's lifting that's cars that's in the TV show is it that's how. That's what Bruce Banner's. Uh, I don't uh, fucking know. Like, the old Bruce Banner, like Lou Ferrigno, yeah, like no, yeah, but oh, I don't know. But the other guy, yeah, da- da- David Squarehead lad, yeah, David. Was his name? It, it was, was David, da- but it was wasn't David, David Banner. Banner. It wasn't Bruce Banner in the show. It was David Banner in the yeah. show? Yeah, yeah. So I don't uh, know why they didn't use Bruce Banner in the show. Uh, his name was David in real life as well. I think anyway, uh, I'm uh, gonna say, well. Tell me. What do you reckon? Uh, yes, he did. He did. Yeah, he did. So, uh. That's crack power, though. <laughs> yeah, that's pure crack power. Now, he was not alone. I, I'm not going to clickbait you into it. He was not alone. So, it's 1998, and, uh, ODB was in the recording studio with a Wu Tang affiliate group called 12 O'Clock. So, Wu Tang had, like, fucking 20 groups that were known as, like, the Wu Tang Killer Bees, um, that were all kind of under the Wu Tang umbrella. And one of them was called 12 O'Clock. Right. So, uh, ODB is in Brooklyn. And uh, he's recording. And they hear a noise outside. Like a big fucking type of noise. And they run outside. And there's a fucking pile up, a couple of cars. Um, smashed up. So uh, the whole group, led by ODB, run outside. And they see this, uh, what age was she? Fuck, she was four, was she? I think she was four years of age. Um, she was underneath the car. Check out my traffic page. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
so they they see fucking this poor girl trapped underneath the car and uh, two or three of them get together and fucking flip this car off her and pull her out of the wreckage. Um, then they wait, they call the ambulance, wait around for the ambulance. 